I still can't decide if this is the best or worst purchase I've ever made in my life. Today might just be the start of the biggest automotive project I have ever taken on. And I'm bringing you guys along for the ride. So for the longest time, I have been heavily influenced and inspired by the cyberpunk retro future aesthetic. When they first dropped that cyberpunk 2077 trailer nine years ago, something about it just like it hit me on another level. And maybe there's some relatability to it, you know, with everything going electric nowadays. These retro cars in this futuristic world, something about it just really resonates with me. Have you ever seen iRobot with Will Smith? And we'll hold the jokes. You are experiencing a car accident. The hell I am! There's a scene where he was driving a gasoline-powered motorcycle. Please tell me this doesn't run on gas! Gas explodes, you know! I'll always just click with that. So the plan is simple. We're gonna find the cheapest clapped out classic BMW we can in California that still runs and drives, and we're gonna give it a second chance at life. We'll restore it from the ground up, fixing everything we can DIY style and showing you every step of the process, good, bad, and the ugly. And then we'll bring it into the year 2077 by customizing it to look right at home in any cyberpunk movie. It's all about bringing the vision 16 year old me dreamed of to life in my garage. We are going to look at two E36 BMWs, and I'm gonna show you guys how I negotiate with sellers on Facebook Marketplace. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to film the sellers directly because filming them can absolutely change the dynamic. Worst case, I'll just have to do a little reenactment. Ooh. The first prospect is make sure you do your research. And the second prospect is have multiple options. So I'm actually going to look at one car right now that is definitely not my first choice, but it's going to give me a baseline to compare to other cars that I end up checking out. And we will go from there. time when you're cruising in Oakland, that's for sure. Okay, there it is. And we see the first one. 20 minutes later. Ooh. All right, so we checked out the first car. And while I said it's good to have options, that was not it. As car enthusiasts, we know the vehicles we pour our hearts and souls into aren't just splurge purchases. They can be long-term investments. And with the used car market being as crazy as ever, my 2005 350Z is currently worth more than I paid for it. If we don't include the parts I've bought. But the problem is most cars that truly appreciate in value cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to actually own. And in these awkward economic times, people are trying to be smart with their money so when the right opportunity presents itself, they're ready. And luckily there's an investment on the market you probably haven't considered. It's not a meme stock, it's not a cryptocurrency, cause I've seen some things. Contemporary art. The art collection of the late co-founder of Microsoft just went up for auction and just 60 pieces sold for one and a half billion dollars. It was actually insane. Fine art is an asset that is continuously appreciated historically, even in tumultuous economic conditions. The last time inflation was this bad, art prices appreciated at an average yearly rate of 17 and a half percent. But we don't have millions to spend on a car or a painting just yet. With today's sponsor, Masterworks, you can invest in contemporary art from legendary artists like Picasso, Monet, Banksy, without paying for the entire painting. They buy the art upfront, store it for three to 10 years, and if the painting sells for a profit, you get your share. Masterworks' last three sales delivered 13.9, 17.8, and 21.5% net returns to their investors. And with demand constantly rising, they're buying art on a weekly basis to keep up. Nearly 600,000 people have signed up so far, but my subscribers can get priority access using the link in the description. Let's turn a painting into a Lambo. Now back to the video. So when you're checking out a cheap BMW in Oakland, that very well could mean that it's being sold by someone who doesn't know anything about the car, it bought it for their first car, um, and lives in the car with their kid or nephew. Um, yeah, so if that's something that you're prepared to deal with, and you're prepared to deal with uh, obvious maintenance neglect and lack of knowledge on maintenance and leaking valve covers and exploded coolant and AC fan that is literally demolished, then 
you're definitely looking to pick up a car like that. There were too many red flags for me, so I just uh, actually pointed out some of the issues that a new, uh, like an actual buyer might be looking for, so that the lady knew ahead of time, so she only seemed a bit more knowledgeable. And I told her good luck with the sale, and uh, now I'm headed off to the second car I'm looking at today. You need to know exactly what you're looking for and what your plans are with the car because that will heavily influence what you're willing to deal with when it comes to issues with the vehicle. What I'm looking for is a car that has a sound driveline, but aesthetically or cosmetically has some issues. Those cosmetic issues are going to be pretty much easy to fix uh, in the grand scheme of things with my plans. But I do need a solid driveline that I can rely on in the meantime before I start doing stuff with the engine. And the other thing is guys, keep in mind, you're dealing with people. So all people skills and precautions, whatever, apply. <laughs> if there's anything else that I've learned, it's don't get emotionally attached to any one vehicle until the title's in your hand. Uh, Cause that can cause plenty of issues and make you end up with a worse deal than you would have otherwise. Another important negotiating tip is to not show your hand. Perfect example, imagine a car needs brand new suspension. Shocks are leaking, the bushings are worn out. Just because you do work on your car yourself and can save thousands of dollars does not mean that A, the seller needs to know that, and B, that because you're doing the work yourself and saving money, that doesn't mean that that savings can get passed on to the seller. You can show up to the negotiation with that information in mind. You say, you told me the work that would need to be done, I got an estimate at a shop and they said it would cost about $1,500. So definitely want to factor that into the negotiations on the final price. Don't hate the player, hate the game, guys. Be respectful, be kind, be courteous, but also be smart about how you're approaching this. It's just like in business. Everyone has something to gain and everyone has something to lose. So you can come out on top in any negotiation situation. If you arm yourself with the knowledge and you have your pre-planned approach, now, I might not be an expert, shrewd negotiator like a certain Ed Bullion, but I do definitely take my inspiration from them. And I definitely think I have a pretty solid idea of how to best approach getting the best deal when it comes to negotiating with private parties. And let's not forget, the last deal I made worked out heavily in my favor uh, with the Z that I saved almost two or three grand on. More importantly, when you buy a set of wheels and get a car free on the side. So when did I get my Z and how much did I pay for it? In July 2019, the deal of the century popped up on Facebook Marketplace and I was right there to capture it. It was listed for 8,500 bucks at 123,000 miles, but the mods list is what caught my attention. It had my dream wheels in a limited edition LE37, Tane Street Flex coilovers, Hotchkiss sway bars front and rear, the adjustable suspension system, Nismo exhaust, colder intake, and a full sound system. But the best part was this custom fender mod as well as these holes cut for extra aerodynamics. When they say mods don't add value, I think that's what they meant. So I used that dent and some true negotiation skills to get it for 5,500 bucks. Only time I've ever owned more than one car, but I sold the Mini Cooper for 2,500, which means if I were to sell the TEs off the Z, I could have actually broken even in this whole transaction. And the Z's currently worth more than I paid for it, so I can follow for more. All right, so our second prospect, we're gonna go meet up with them right now. And realistically, if those things check out with this car, I'm trying to buy it. But if something doesn't check out, there are always other cars that are gonna be for sale, so wish me luck. How to inspect a used car. I hope you're a fast reader because I need you to memorize every single thing on this list, including the car basics, the body, all four tires, interior, la blah, 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 blah. Or you can follow the link in the description to the car god himself, Chris Fix's awesome videos he did on the subject. He even has an awesome checklist to print out and bring along for reference whenever you're looking for a car of your own. Just make sure you're really thorough because there's no tick backs once you hand over the cash. So anyways, the second car we checked out was also a total bucket. Oh, I felt that in my soul. But besides the obvious transmission issues, the test rate went okay on this 99-323 IS. It looked alright in pictures, but up close you could tell not a single side had not been crashed into. And the seller's story was pretty sketchy too. He said he'd had it for about two weeks and bought it off another guy who swapped the motor in previously. What even is that? But we tried to get the guy on the phone with some paperwork to no avail. The car was basically slammed on some eBay coilovers I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy, the interior was in shambles, and I could just tell that there was going to be hidden damage that I would not find until later. All this on top of it being a salvage title. And unfortunately with all these red flags and it being the literal peak of the used car market, I made the only mature, reasonable adult decision that was left on the table, and I bought it anyways. First drive is the owner of an actual BMW. 
And all I can say is I'm extremely excited because I know there's a ton of work to do to this thing, but the end result and the process to get there is going to be mind blowing. And there you have it. But I can already smell the comments from people telling me how dumb I am for buying this dumpster fire of a car. But when you look at the one bit angle this thing has, you can see the potential to bring my cyberpunk inspired vision to life. Those comments will be justified when I show you everything I found wrong with the car and tell you exactly how much it cost me in the next video. But remember guys, I'm challenging myself to learn everything I can about restoring and building a car from scratch and then bringing you along for every step of this transformation. So first off, let's get this salvage out of car, road legal in the state of California, and my God, we'll be in for a challenge right out of the gate. Thank you.